Welcome back out on the Mushroom Trail. It's a beautiful day here, early April in the Pacific Northwest, and can't wait to jump back into this forest to see what we can find in the way of mushrooms. So thanks so much for coming along. And if you're liking these videos, remember, hit the like button, subscribe, stay tuned. Let's jump in. Let's see what we see. So I'm just moving up a game trail here and we've got a downed red alder. Take a look at this. Just beautiful little mushroom growing off of the side of this red alder. Some of you may recognize this. This is what's known as the common eyelash. This is an ascomycete or a cup fungus. It's in the genus Scutalenia and the full Latin name Scutalenia scutellata. This is the eyelash cup fungus goes by a few different common names, but let me zoom in here and uh, get a closer view for you. So what you'll notice on this is if you look really, really closely, you see these little eyelashes growing on the side of this, these cups. That's where this one gets its common name and this is a distinguishing feature for this particular one. So you can see those slight little eyelash-like hairs growing off of the side of these cups. Very cool to see out here in early April in the Pacific Northwest. So if you're out here, really got to look carefully on those hardwoods to really positively kind of clue into this one. But once you start seeing it, you'll notice it's more common than you may realize. It easily escapes our uh, detection if we're not really looking for it. So cool to see out here. That's the eyelash cup fungus, Scutalenia scutellata. Beautiful. So I'm just in the forest out here. I'm underneath a black cottonwood. We've got a maple next to it. And in my quest to locate the first early morel of the season, Verpa bohemica, I'm not finding that, but I did come across a nice little fruiting of these guys. You can see some more down there, some younger ones. These are a little bit more mature. This is a very common mushroom out here, often referred to as a field mushroom. This is in the genus Agrasabi, or Agrasabi. And notice that it's got a little bit of a skirt there. Close gills. Let's see if we take a closer look here. Yeah, so notice, got a nice, kind of shot of the gills here. We can see mostly white, a little bit of light brown in places. And we look at this cap, it's got very slight um, bow in the center there and kind of freed it out. There are a couple of these. This is probably the Grossity Praycox. It could be a different one. We've got a little younger fruiting body over there. And actually, swing around over here as I kind of scour the ground we can see another one here so no verpa bohemica yet but we do see an agrosabi this is an edible mushroom I don't think I'm going to gather or collect this one today but very interesting to see out here continuing to keep my eyes peeled under the cottonwoods coming across field mushrooms but no verpas yet so notice how this younger agrosabi it's a much darker cap. You see little flecks on their color. Let's go ahead and take a look underneath. Yeah, so notice how it's got this veil covering the gills underneath. We can see a few little bugs or mites on there. Ooh, very cool to see though. So darker cap, we see that the stipe has those slight lines. Now as that partial veil kind of opens up, we may see a little bit of a skirt on the stipe as observed on the larger species. So very interesting to see. Cool mushroom. Not the one I'm looking for, but still love seeing this out here. So again, that's a grossaby, likely a grossaby precox. I'm just out in a really cool 
Kind of wetland type area, kind of seasonally has water. A lot of cedars and hemlocks and the like out here. Just wanted to show you this one really cool plant. I could actually smell this before I could see it. And I'm sure some of you recognize this. This is what's known as skunk cabbage. It gets its name because it smells quite skunky. This is a favorite food of the bears out here in the springtime. And uh, super interesting plant. I love seeing this one. So just a cool, cool sight, cool smell that I figured I'd just pull over and stop to admire for a quick sec. Cool to see, skunk cabbage. Moving just down the trail here, I spotted a mushroom that I'm super excited about just off to the side of the trail over here. Check this out. Look at this beautiful little cup fungus down here. This is such a unique little mushroom. This is what's known as the spring orange peel fungus, Calascypha fulgens. Now this represents a monotypic genus, meaning it's the only member of this genus, Calascypha. And it's worth noting that this one, so it's got this orangish yellow look. Now this could be confused with the orange peel fungus, which has a similar name, somewhat similar appearance and is edible. Whereas this one, I remember in reading in Steve Trudell's book on uh, mushrooms of the Pacific Northwest, that this one, there have been reported cases of poisoning or toxicity from this one. So definitely a good one to avoid. Now, one of the things that makes this stand out from the edible orange peel fungus is you'll notice on the outer edge, there's almost like a blue green color. Some would describe it maybe as an olive coloration. This is very typical of this one. And you know, if you remember to look for that and you confirm that that's there, that should help you to be able to differentiate this from its edible counterpart. And you can really see it from this side, right? That darkening, whereas the orange peel fungus will have a lighter outside uh, edge of the cup. Now, it's worth noting too, that this one is really common in the mountains. So a lot of times you'll find this, um, kind of as snow melts off and retreats, it'll kind of follow that snow line. Now today, you know, I'm in the lowlands where I don't see this as frequently. So super excited to be coming across this and sure is a beautiful mushroom that, you know, even though it stands out quite a bit, it's weirdly easy to miss on this carpet of moss and just kind of mixed in with the leaves and everything else. So. Really a uh, beautiful mushroom, cool to see out here. Again, that's the spring orange peel fungus, Calascypha fulgens. Keep your eye out for this if you're down here in the Pacific Northwest right now, it seems to really be out. And as I looked around in this area, I saw quite a few more little fruiting bodies of this that I didn't initially see. So I'll throw those up here just so that you can get a look at kind of less mature ones and what they, what they look like on this, uh, mossy carpet hiding under salal cool to see just a really tiny one down here beautiful to look at and here we see one squeezed in between these mosses under the salal just opening up let me actually peel this back so that you can kind of see what that looks like Really cool, coming alive. Just coming up the trail here. Check this out. How cool is this? Moving just up the trail here, see a little flash of white down here. This is something that I've been seeing quite a bit of recently. This is actually not a fungus, but a true slime mold. This is what's known as dog sick slime mold, Nusilaga crustacea. You can see it just growing right off of this fern here. So as a plasmoidal slime mold, this will actually scour the forest floor 
in search of food in the form of both bacteria, fungi, other kind of microbes. And when it either runs out of food or decides it's time to move on to that next stage of life, it'll do exactly what we're seeing here, which is, you know, this is its fruit body that's full of spores. So it's getting ready to disseminate and spread and kind of begin that next phase of life. So slime molds are certainly one of those fascinating things that although not, you know, technically mushrooms or fungi, they're super fascinating. And there's something that anytime that I'm searching the forest for mushrooms, I tend to encounter these slime molds. So very cool one. Again, dog sick slime mold. Keep your eyes peeled for this one. It's really out right now. So moving just up the trail here, see a really cool mushroom. Fairly common out here, but boy, just a real beauty. Let's zoom in. Let's take a look at this. Let me clear out these sticks here. So notice this one's got a bit of a funnel shape to it. You can see a little bit of water pooled up there, kind of a brownish colored cap. Really kind of quite photogenic. If I pan underneath here, you're gonna notice a white poured surface. So this is a polypore, and like all other polypores, this does lacking gills. You can see finely white poured surface underneath there. And notice that the stipe or stem of this is dark, right? So this one is commonly referred to as the black-footed or black-legged polypore. The scientific name for this, Pisipes batius, um, it's gone through several different names in its taxonomic history. So at one point it was referred to most commonly as polyporus batius. And I think Rhodoporus batius, I think that all of those are kind of synonymous with this, but really photogenic mushroom, quite common. This is one of our saprophytic mushrooms. So if we kind of dig or look underneath here, surely this is growing from woody material. So if I actually lift this stick up, you can see that it's growing directly from this stick. And again, this is fairly common out here. So if you keep your eyes peeled for this, you're, there's a really good chance that you're gonna bump into this one. And uh, it can last out here for quite some time. So, you know, I'm seeing this right now growing off this stick. There's a good chance that if I check back a couple months from now, I'm still gonna be able to find this. So cool to see, again, that's the black-footed polypore, or black-legged polypore, really beautiful. Look at that nice funnel shape vibrant colors, and again, that darkened stipe really differentiates this from some of the other polypores that are out there. So, cool to see. So check this out. I'm just a little bit off trail here, and you see on the side of this old dug fir log, we've got these little shelf fungi that are growing off of the side of this. Now, these are really, really small. So, you know, notice if I put my finger out here to give you a little bit of scale, this thing is tiny. What this looks like to me is Ganoderma aplanatum, and you know, which is commonly referred to as the artist conch. If I rub my finger underneath, so you can see that it stains or easily leaves a mark on there. So very interesting. Usually I see this is quite a bit bigger. So I'm gonna actually explore this a little further I'm gonna go down this log. It looks like quite a ways down here. I see more fruit bodies. So let's go investigate a little closer. Again, the growth on this is a little bit smaller. So I'm not 100% sold on it being the artist conch, but it sure looks like that. So let's investigate further and see if we can confirm one way or the other. Yeah, so look at this. So I'm standing on this log currently. And if we zoom in and we take a look at some of these, look at this strange, growth of this and if I pan over you're gonna see more of it definitely looks like Ganoderma aplanatum to me growing off of this dug fur but boy so small some of these growth structures these little kind of I think of them as like ET fingers coming off of these logs are somewhat reminiscent of the Rishi right the West Coast Rishi Ganoderma organensi, obviously a related species. But again, I usually, when I bump into these, they're usually quite a bit bigger. So kind of interesting to see them just kind of starting out. I believe that that's what this is. Again, if you have a differing opinion on this, 
definitely feel free to chime in and let me know in the comments. Interesting to see them. Now I'm just on the other side of this log just to kind of give you yet another perspective here on this. So you can see these fruiting bodies, again, just for scale, super, super small. But you see that they've got this characteristic where I can easily mark those with my finger. Again, I'm open to the fact that it could be a different type of polypore, but sure looks like a young artist conch to me. So cool to see out here. And uh, yeah, commonly I do spot this growing on this same substrate, right? On old dug fir logs. So, and it makes sense that this could be a relatively fresh fruiting. So just kind of getting it start out here. But really cool to see in this state and sort of unusual, at least from my experience, to see it this young. So, neat to observe. And boy, they just keep on going here. This one right here might be my favorite. Let me just pan over to it. Check this out. So just a tiny little guy. But again, just kind of got this weird little alien, alien arm shooting up here. Beautiful to look at. So I'm moving just down a little side trail here. And check this out, just off to the left here, all down this log is a really great example of such a cool little mushroom. Let me just zoom in here so you can see these round kind of knobby little mushrooms growing off of the side of this old dug fir. Boy, look at those. They almost look like big gobs of mochi or something, right? The way that they're kind of so perfectly round and really distinct, right? So if we look down the rest of this log too, check this out. I mean, there are so many of them. We've got a big one down here. And as we move beyond this little branch and look further down, you just see that it's totally littered with them. Now, this is a mushroom that we discussed recently on a recent video. Um, this is what's commonly referred to as the veiled polypore, Cryptoporus vulvatus. And this one, that genus Cryptoporus means crypto, which is hidden pores, right? So this is actually gonna be hollow inside. And if I squeeze on this, it's kind of like, I don't know if you can see that, but I can actually easily compress that. And the reason why is because it's actually hollow inside. So give me a sec. Let me pull out the knife. Let's cut the end of this and see what it looks like on the inside. All right. So I just harvested this one off the side and notice how it's got this little attachment point. Now, a lot of times when I see these and they're older, there will be a small little hole at the bottom. And the reason why is because this particular mushroom is super unique in the fact that it'll oftentimes house bark beetles. So it's got a symbiotic relationship with them where it provides the perfect little habitat or environment for those larvae to kind of grow and take shape. And then once they're at maturity, they'll actually burrow outside of this. And because the pores to this, which are full of spores, are inside of this hollow structure, by the time those bark beetles exit these mushrooms, they're covered in spores. At which point, if all goes as planned, they go find their next target tree and they successfully kind of spread or disseminate those spores, which then this, this fungus then invades that new tree host. And so very, very interesting. Now let's see as we cut into this. Yeah, this is super, super interesting to see. So take a look at this. So inside of this, you can see that we've got a hollow structure down at the bottom. I noticed that some of these have gutation, like a bead or two of gutation on the outside of them, which I don't oftentimes see. But here's what's cool. You can see this is that, that pore surface that's inside. Again, cryptoporous. So hidden pores, right? Hidden inside. And by the time these uh, bark beetles crawl outside of these, they get covered in these spores, which are being basically distributed inside of this kind of, you know, egg-shaped 
fruiting body. So really, really cool. That's a great look inside. You can actually see those pores and what that looks like. And boy, to the touch, you can just tell picking this up that it's, it's super light. It feels like a ping pong ball or something, just super hollow. And again, kind of little mochi like on the outside. So really cool mushroom, really cool example of a symbiotic relationship of different organisms working together out here in nature to really kind of do their thing and, and uh, work together to be successful in nature. So very cool to see. Again, that's the veiled polypore. Keep your eye out for that one. Cool to see. And boy, if we look down this log, we just continue to see more and more of these veiled polypores. Just beautiful to look at as I kind of graze down this log. You can see a bunch of them coming out. One thing that I wanted to point out real quick is that if we look sharing this log, we've got another mushroom that we featured on videos past. This is a common turkey tail lookalike. You can see how it's kind of got banded colors somewhat. Um, it's a little more drab, right? Like a little less contrast to those colors. If I flip this one and we look underneath, we see a little hint of violet and some tooth-like structures. Now, it's just a little coarse or rough. This is what's known as the violet-toothed polypore. This is in the Trichaptum genus. So this is Trichaptum abietinum. Back east, you'll have Trichaptum biform growing on deciduous wood. But again, this is a dug fir. So this oftentimes grows on coniferous wood out here in the Pacific Northwest and very often confused with turkey tail. So it's a good one to know, good one to be able to differentiate. So again, that violet toothed polypore sharing this space here with the veiled polypore. So moving just up the trail here, see a really cool mushroom just off to the side of the trail here, kind of a little slightly covered by the ferns. Let's zoom in here and take a look. So. This one, let me just peel back those ferns. So you'll notice this has these white little warts or spots on the cap. This is a very common sight up here. I'm sure that several of you recognize this. This is related to the fly agaric, which is like, you know, commonly referred to as the Alice in Wonderland mushroom or the Mario mushroom. If we look down here at the base of this, you'll notice a really important aspect or feature of this. So you'll see this like, egg-like structure, right, or this ball here. This is what's known as the veil or the vulva of this. So this is actually a universal veil. These white dots that are up on the top of this are the remnants from the universal veil. So in the very early stages of this, that entire mushroom was contained within this little egg-like structure. And as it began to grow and fruits and the cap broke through the surface of that, part of that universal veil is clinging to the cap of this. So that's what we see up top on both the fly agaric and this one, which I guess I failed to mention earlier. This is what's commonly referred to as the panther cap, Amanita pantheroides. This is, you know, out in Europe or UK, it's uh, Amanita pantherina. This is kind of our own little local offshoot species within that same clade or class. So interesting to see. Now notice too that we've got a really distinct little annulus here or skirt around it. So this is from what's referred to as a partial veil. So in this one's younger days, there was a veil covering up the gill structure. And once the gills kind of started to, or the cap started to expand and expose the gills, it leaves this little ring or annulus. So again, very cool to see out here. Now it's also worth noting that this particular one is responsible for quite a few poisonings, both when it comes to humans and to pets like dogs. Um, on the human side, a lot of times humans actually seek this out for recreational purposes because maybe they've read or heard about different kind of stories about Amanita mushrooms and uh, gotten some lofty ideas, but not recommended at all. Uh, this is quite a toxic mushroom that can give you a pretty bad time. So um, again, responsible for quite a few poisonings and uh, a lot of times people get carried away with this one. So best just admired and left here on the forest floor, but really beautiful to look at and uh, cool to see out here. So again, that's the panther cap, Amanita pantheroides. We'll see. 
Moving just up the trail here. See another example of one that we featured a couple weeks back. This is what's typically referred to as the brittle cinder, Cretchmaria deusta. And we can see this growing off the side of what is likely big leaf maple. So this favors hardwoods. And if we look further down this little log here, notice that I see some older examples of this same mushroom, of this brittle cinder. And I just wanted to take a quick second to show you how this gets its common name. So if I take this and I just kind of gently push on this, you'll hear that crackling sound. Almost sounds like charcoal or coal or something. Very brittle. It's firm in places, but on the whole, it's very brittle and that's where it gets its name, brittle cinder. So again, this is pathogenic. So this will actually, you know, show up on living hardwoods, you know, oftentimes around the roots and it'll attack the tree. And obviously this tree is long gone, right? This big leaf maple has been down for a while and we can still see that it's kind of doing its thing out here and that's pretty typical. So it'll continue to flourish and do its thing until it has consumed all of the hosts that it can use and then it'll move on. So interesting to see out here. So again, that's the brittle cinder. Moving just down the trail here, see a bright white mushroom just off to the side of the trail here. Let's zoom in, let's take a look. So notice, so zoom in and take a look. You can notice that that white cap looks almost fibrous. And if we take a peek underneath, let's see. We've got a relatively sturdy stipe or stem here. I suspect that once we look underneath the cap, we're gonna see light brown spore color on the cap or on the gills, I should say. Let's take a look and see. Yeah, sure enough. So this one still in the process of opening up. So we can see how that cap is slightly overhanging there. It hasn't opened up fully, but we can see that light brown spore color already underneath there. I'm going to give this a quick whiff too, just to kind of get that scent. Yeah, so it's got a very unique spermatic odor. This is actually a fiber cap. Very common mushroom out here, uh, very frequently pops up in the, during the winter months. We're kind of at the tail end of its common fruiting season out here, but we can see this is a relatively fresh one coming up here. In a recent episode, we featured um, the lilac fiber cap. This may be that one in a more mature state, but I would generally refer to this as the white fiber cap, geophila group. And uh, within that, there are several different subspecies and you know relatively complex genus so it's worth mentioning too that these are you know there's a lot of toxic mushrooms that contain you know muscarin and other toxins so these are best left on the forest floor and admired uh, from here but really cool to see and a uh, very unique one so awesome to see fiber cap so moving just down the trail here See a really cool sight just off on the side of the trail here. Take a look at this. So growing off of this log here, looks to be, well, I would guess an alder log, although it could be a maple log, but boy, we talked about the violet tooth polypore being a very typical or common turkey tail lookalike. This is another very common turkey tail look alike. In fact, it's typically referred to as the false turkey tail. And you can really see how this particular one could be confused with turkey tail. So if we look closely here, we notice that we've got sort of banded colors, a little bit of a felty feel up top and a white outer margin. If I turn this over so that we can look underneath though, we notice that we've got a smooth buff orange surface it's very different from the underside of turkey tail. So you might recall that turkey tail will have fine white pores underneath, whereas this one's smooth orange surface. So very interesting to see. This is a classic example of false turkey tail. That is um, 
Asterium hirsutum is the is the Latin or scientific name for that. So again, false turkey tail, Asterium hirsutum. Very good to see out here. Good to be able to differentiate or tell those apart. So cool to see. And uh, again, growing from hardwood. So very similar environment. This could be the exact same log that you may see true turkey tail growing off of. So easily confused and uh, good to be able to differentiate those out here in the field. And interesting to note that just down from this false turkey tail that's really fresh, we've got some older false turkey tail or sterium. And boy, this also looks quite similar to true turkey tail. So again, would be easy to confuse. But again, if we flip that over and look at the underside, we see even though this has some age on it, we've got that kind of orange buff surface that's smooth, lacking the pores that we would typically see with true turkey tail. But we do have a little bit of a felty feel up top and certainly some banded colors. So really interesting to see. Good to be able to tell the difference between the two. And uh, again, that's our false turkey tail. And as is so typical out here, literally just feet down the trail, also on an alder log, we've got an example of true turkey tail. So notice if you look at this, this is certainly aged, right? This has a little algal growth on the side of it. But we can see as we look at this that we've got, okay, felty surface, so small or slight hairs on there. Um, we've got banded colors, and if I Pull this off and turn this over. So you'll notice this is quite a bit different than what we were just looking at a second ago. So you can see that really finely poured surface, right? We see fine white pores on the other side of this one. And that is a clear differentiating factor. Now, as reference, you know, this is a little bit past its prime. It's got that algal growth. This is probably not one that I'd necessarily bring home, although these ones. I would consider taking home with me. And uh, let's actually take a look down the back side of this. Yeah, so we've got some fresher fruiter, fruiting bodies right down here. Those look pretty decent. I may harvest a few of those. I see more stuff growing further down here. Oh, this is super interesting. So we just mentioned this a second ago. So this is literally the exact same alder log We've got turkey tail on one side and false turkey tail or sterium on the other side. So if I pull this off and we look underneath, look at that. Smooth buff orange surface. So exact same log as the true turkey tail. So again, as I've referenced in previous videos, not a huge deal if you were to get these confused for the simple fact that, you know, this false turkey tail, well, not being what we're after, it's also non-toxic. So, and I've heard it said that this probably has medicinal capabilities as well, but it's certainly not as well researched or studied as true turkey tail. So big fan of being able to differentiate the two of those and uh, super interesting that they're loving the same habitat, same exact substrate so much that they're actually sharing this alder log on the side of the trail here. So cool to see. Keep your eyes peeled out there. This is the most studied medicinal mushroom on the planet. So if you do see young fruiting bodies, which I oftentimes do see in the springtime, you might want to consider bringing some of these home with you. So awesome to see out here. Keep your eyes peeled. So the bald eagles have been going kind of wild out here the last several days. So they've been calling back and forth these last few minutes. So I figured I'd just turn this on seeing the off chance that we can catch it on the film. Catch a glimpse of them maybe, they're out just up here. Here they are. I don't see them, but I certainly hear them. awesome out here. So we've got the robin and the raven both kind of singing. See if we can get these bald eagles to sing again for us. It's 
That's the call of the bald eagle. Well, that concludes another great day out here on the Mushroom Trail. Thanks so much for coming along. And until next time, happy trails. <laughs>